Hey guys, welcome to another Walk-In Wednesday. This is a rifle that walked in recently, and it had me a little perplexed right away because I have not seen one before. Um, it's it's uh, made in Austria in uh, during the World War I period of time, but it's in such fantastic condition, it's almost too good to be true. Uh, the gun is all matching. You can see the matching uh, serial number on the stock. On the gun, it's Mark Steyer, and it's a Model 95. So 1895 is the original patent. And as I said, these were, we, these were made primarily for service in World War I. Now, one thing that you noticed already, and which was glaring, was the Nazi proof stamp. Uh, the person that sent it to me said it was a very rare variation. I had not seen one before, and so um, I, I was, you know, basically he said it's in mint condition. It's Nazi proof stamped in a several locations. As soon as I saw it, I had a big red flag on the Nazi proof. If we take a close look at that, it's very, very clear. And uh, that's usually a red flag. In fact, there's a saying in this, uh, in this business, if you can see the circle and the swastika, it's probably a fake. Um, we're going to talk through that a little bit, and the whole reason I'm, I normally wouldn't bring you something that was faked, but I think this is a good uh, learning lesson, and it spills over to other Nazi items. So a little bit about the uh, Steyr, first and foremost. Again, used in World War I. Uh, when I got it in, uh, you, you would have uh, had a good time laughing at me because, uh, like a K98 and other bolt-action rifles, I was pushing and pushing and pushing and bang, and I was ready to get a, a rubber mallet could not get this bolt up. And I thought, well, the, gu the gun doesn't even work. And I, I, I have to tell you, I, I played with it for probably 20 minutes until I realized, duh, it goes straight back. <laughs> no, most rifles go up and back. This one just comes straight back. So that's a unique feature. As I said, I hadn't seen one before, similar to a K98, but not a K98. But the reason for the video, again, I want to go back to the stamp. So let's go back and look at uh, several of these stamps. I already mentioned this one. We'll take a look at it. Um, and you can see here how crisp it is, how deep it is into the wood. Looks like it was done yesterday. And in fact, it was, uh, it was done back in the 1990s. Uh, there's also other uh, stamps. You can see Nazi stamps on the receiver. And then uh, a big um, Nazi stamp, it's kind of cut off with, with the wood, but you can see the, the wings of the eagle very plainly, and you can see the uh, swastika that goes down below the wood. Um, again, it's crisp, it's clean, uh, very well stamped. These are red flags in general. Um, if you look at a uh, K98, um, and let's just take a look at the Waffen stamp. They're, uh, often they're very faint, very hard to see. Um, the, the wood raises over a period of time. So in other words, when you, uh, same way with leather, when you stamp it in, it goes, it goes into the wood or it goes into the leather. But over time and moisture and things like that, it begins to raise. Just like when I, uh, when I leave my sofa on the carpet for a very long period of time and then move it, you'll see the legs indented into the carpet. But over time, uh, that carpeting will begin to raise. So uh, when you see deep, crisp, easy to see the wings, easy to see the swastika, oftentimes these are fake. It's not universally true, but just be very careful about Waffen stamped. Um, of course, when I saw that it was a fake, I called the, um, I called the owner, and he was uh, very surprised because he bought it from a, uh, what he thought was a reputable dealer. And in fact, maybe the dealer was full too. But when I went to the internet, I saw very quickly that uh, these were actually imported uh, from Europe into the United States. Uh, they were all reworked, meaning um, uh, the bluing was redone. They were polished up. The, these stocks were uh, sanded down and re-varnished. They all look immaculate like this one does. Uh, and from what I could tell, they brought in about 100 of them already stamped with Nazi stamps, already stamped on the stock, uh, brought in about 100 of them back in the 1990s. Um, and collectors just gobbled them up because they were very, very cheap. So uh, a, a, a similar style uh, in original condition would be a, a rifle that was maybe five or $600. You add the uh, Nazi stamp and it becomes a rare variation um, and the owner was thinking it was worth about $2,000. So obviously adding the stamp adds a lot of money, so buyer beware. Uh, a little bit more about the mystique of this particular gun. Uh, if you watch our YouTube channels, you'll hear me talk about the fact that 
Um, most of the German weapons already were procured by the Army, meaning the Army had standing orders uh, for K-98s and P-38s and Lugers. And so when the Waffen-SS started, I did a video about Gottlob Berger, who was the father of the Waffen-SS. When the Waffen-SS started, all, this, all the weapons were already spoken for. There were standing orders for all the German weapons. So they tended to, they tended to get the um, leftover rifles that were reworked. They tended to get uh, capture guns, meaning they, uh, factories. Uh, when the um, Germans took over uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, Belgium, uh, France, uh, when they went into these countries, they, they captured these weapons, and a lot of those went to the SS. They did not get Waffen stamps. They usually got SS rework stamp, which is a whole nother video. So generally, they did not get German-made weapons. They got weapons from other countries, such as the Steyr. Now, the Steyr factory in World War II, we know that it, it would have had a BNZ marking, and there are BNZ um, K-98 rifles that did go to the Waffen-SS, and they have a completely different stamp, not the, the Waffen stamp, as, as you see here. So, buyer beware. Uh, let's take a look at a, a few other uh, faked weapons. I generally don't have fake, gun, uh, fake stampings in my office, um, and part of my recommendation to you is when you buy a gun, buy from a reputable dealer. If you're walking around the gun show just buying from somebody that you don't know and you're never going to see again, if it's too good to be true, uh, don't buy it. I, I like uh, used weapons that look like they went through the war. This, this one uh, does not. And so buyer beware. Let's take a look at a couple of holsters because that's the only other thing I have here where I can show you some fake stamps. Um, so again, I'll repeat the general rule of thumb. If, if, if you can see the feathers perfectly and you can see a swastika perfectly, uh, it, it's you, buyer beware. Um, and I'll say this over and over again to collectors because they call me up and say, oh, the, the stamp is a little bit off, it's a little bit crooked, it's a little bit sideways, I think it's a fake. Remember, these were made for war. These went to war. They were not made for collectors. They were not sitting around saying, hey, hold it, do that one over again. I, I had a, uh, an Eagle, uh, Eagle C proof on a PPK, and it was double stamp, meaning a double tap, so it almost looks a, a little bit blurred. And I had a uh, advanced collector say, oh, the Germans would never have let this leave the factory because they were perfectionists about their stamps. Not true. <laughs> they were banging these out as fast as they could, and sometimes they're double stamped, sometimes they're crooked. I have Walder banners that are upside down. So um, they were making them for war, not for collectors. Now, uh, jumping over to holsters, because that's the uh, other really good example. This one is... Uh, this is what you'll see a lot. I can barely make out the date. If you take a look at this, uh, usually there's the initials of the factory. You can see here BLA, and then I can barely make out the 1941. Again, remember, it's stamped in, it raises over time, and the Waffen stamp is almost completely gone, but there is just a shadow of a Waffen, Waffen stamp. This is typically what you're going to see on holsters, and by the way, on stocks of guns. Not so much the metal. Obviously, the metal doesn't blur over time, but stocks and leather, they will. Here's one that is real, but is about as good as it gets. This holster is a P38 holster in absolutely mint condition. Love this holster. This one will stay in my collection. Just look how nice it is. Inside, uh, there's some paint left. Uh, the black paint here often is worn off. There's some paint left. But the markings, that's about as strong a marking as you're ever going to see. But even with that, I can't make out the number on the Waffen proof, and I know there's an eagle with a swastika underneath it. I can definitely make out the maker and the year of 1943, P38, but I can barely make out the Waffen stamp. Now, side by side, let's take a look at this one that's real, and again, this is as good as it gets in terms of stamps. Here's a P38 from a fake holster. Uh, the stamping is very deep. It's very crisp. I can read the number very clearly. I can see the wings on the eagle, and I can see a swastika. Interestingly, the, P30, the P38, uh, is, uh, P38 marking is a little bit faint. Uh, the stitching, you can see the, the, the stitching uh, definitely looks different. See the stitching at the top. You can see the difference, but basically uh, uh, these Repro holsters sell for about uh, 40 bucks. Um, they're not bad if you just have a shooter grade gun or you're a reenactor. I'm not 
I'm not saying there's no value to these. There are. Also, uh, one other clue we, we like to use around here. You smell it, and it smells like a brand new pair of shoes. That's, that's one good clue. This one smells like sweaty socks. Um, so that's the difference. Let me show you one other, uh, this time a Luger. This one is even more obvious. Take a look at that stamp, how big the uh, eagle is. Uh, again, you can see the swastika, the, the wings on the eagle, the date, the maker. Uh, this is a Luger holster um, and reproduction. I would say this is a, a really good quality reproduction, but I'm only expecting to pay um, 50 bucks for this. And, and again, I have people who buy them just for display or for reenactment, nothing wrong with that. Uh, notice the difference in the size of the eagle. It's bigger and uh, crisper, and that, that's basically a fake stamp. So there's a lot to learn in this hobby, and if you're spending a lot of money, make sure you read, uh, get some books, read them. Uh, uh, most of all, buy from reputable dealers. I'm biased, but obviously, if you come to Legacy Collectibles, we stand behind what we sell. Uh, so you want to buy some, from somebody who you know is going to stand behind the quality and the authenticity of the weapon or the holster. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share with a friend so they don't make a mistake. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we do our next video.